Hello friends, previously we have discussed about the discrete frequency distribution. Now we will see continuous frequency distribution. So, what is actually continuous frequency distribution? A continuous frequency distribution is a series in which the data are classified into different class intervals without gaps and their respective frequencies are assigned as per the class intervals and class width. Now, see the important terms under the continuous frequency distribution. First, what is actually class limit? So, class limit are the two end values of the class intervals. For example, the class is like this 0 to 10, then 10 to 20. This is continuous class because upper limit of previous class is 10 and lower limit for the next class is 10. So, here there is no gap. Now, class boundaries. So, whenever there is a discontinuous class, in that case, we have to calculate lower class boundary, upper class boundary as well as D. That is the gap between upper class limit of any class and lower class limit of the next class. So, how you will calculate lower class boundary for this 0 to 9? So, here for lower class boundary for 0 to 9 is equal to lower class limit. So, our lower class limit is here 0 minus 1 by 2 into D. D is here 1. So, 1 by 2 into 1. So, 1 by 2 is nothing but the 0.5. So, it is minus 0 0.5. Now, upper class boundary that is equal to upper class limit that is 9 plus 1 by 2 D it is equal to 0 0.5. So, 9 plus 0 0.5 which is equal to 9.5. Similarly, we can calculate for this also. So, here 10 is the lower class limit. So, it is 10 minus 0 0.5 which is equal to 9.5. So, see here for the previous class, your limit is minus 0 0.5 to 9.5 and for the next class, it is equal to 9.5 to 19.5 and so on. So, in this way, we can calculate lower class boundary and upper class boundary. Now, next class midpoint or class marks. So, how you calculate class mark? It is nothing but the lower class limit plus upper class limit divided by 2. So, here lower class limit is 0, upper class limit is 9. So, 0 plus 9 divided by 2, which is nothing but the class midpoint. Now, what is actually class width? It is the length or range of the class interval. So, here width of the class, which is equal to upper class boundary minus lower class boundary. So, here upper class boundary minus lower class boundary, this is nothing but the class width. Now, see example based on this. So, using this Sturges rule, we can find out the number of classes for the given data items. How you will calculate number of classes? By using this formula, n is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log n, where capital N is number of data items. So, classify in equal intervals the following data of hours spent in working by 50 workers. So, here hours spent are given for the 50 workers. Now, see here n value is equal to 50. Now, apply this Sturgis rule. So, calculate n is equal to number of classes. So, n is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log of n. n is 50. So, log 50 is 1.6990. So, multiply these two terms. We will get 5.6441 plus 1 which is equal to 6.64 which is nothing but the rounded value is 7. Now, calculate the interval for these classes. Number of classes are 7. How you calculate the interval? Range divided by 1 plus 3.322 log n, which is equal to 204. So, see here 204 in this data items. The how you calculate range? This is the maximum value from this data item, and this is the minimum value from this data item. So, 30 is the minimum value, and 204 is the maximum value. So, 204 minus 30 divided by 7, which is equal to 24.85. And in rounded it is 25. So, this is the interval. Now, you have to ca calculate what or construct frequency table. So, class, classes are given, 7 classes are there. Here 7 is given. Now, tally marks, all of you know about this and frequency, all of you know. Now, write down this classes. See, start from 30, 30 and here range between this is 25. So, 30 plus 25 which is equal to 55. So, here lower class limit is 30, upper is 55. Now, next start from 55, again 55 plus 25, so 80. Next same way 80 plus 25, 105. So, in this way you can calculate the classes values. 
now tally marks now see 30 to 55 in this range how many data items are there so see here in the first row 30 to 55 there is no item second row 30 to 55 see this one in the third row again there is no data item in the fourth one 30 to 50, again there is no data item in the last one see here 40 is there also t 30 to 55 now here range is starting from 30 to 50, so we have to consider 30 also so 1 2 3 so here three tally marks are there and frequency is 3 now for the 55 to 80 see in the previous class we have to include only 30 and more than 30 but it is less than 55 but for the second one 55 to 80 we have to include 55 and above but which is less than 80 so see for the second one 55 to 80 in the first row there is no item 55 to 80 first one then this second one 62 now see in the third row again there is no data item in the next one again 55 to 80 79 also there this is 69 also there now in the last one 55 to 80 there is no data item so here how many values are there 4 so 1 2 3 4 so 4 tally marks are there so frequency is 4 so in this way we can calculate what frequencies of all these classes now total calculate the total frequency it is equal to 50 now see your data items consist of again 50 values so your answer is what correct so this is all about what construction of frequency table for the continuous frequency distribution now see again for the next one here data of 60 students given we have to construct what frequency table but here class interval is already given so start from 0 to 9 huh? so first is what class 0 to 9 next of equal width see with 10 classes so classes 10 are already given so here classes are 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now of equal width so see 0 to 9 difference is 9 so again 10 to 19 again difference is 9 20 to 9 29 difference is 9 in this way you can construct up to what 90 to 99 because here in data set up to this value 90 to 99 there are data items are there so last class interval is 90 to 99 now again put the tally marks same way huh? 0 to 9 so see first for the first one 0 to 9 in the first row there is no data item in the second one 0 to 9 again there is no data item in the third one see 0 to 9 here 9 is there now here 3 is there in the next one again 0 to 9 here again there is one zero. now in the last one see here again there is no data item here 1 is remaining uh, 0 to 9 again in the first one see 6 is there so see 1 2 3 and 4 here there are 4 data items so tally marks are 4 and frequency is 4 this is for the first class interval in the same way all of you know about this you can calculate what frequency for 10 to 19 it is 3 20 to 19 it is 3 and so on and calculate again the total frequency so their frequency is 60 and which is correct that is here the percentage marks of 60 students are already given so this is nothing but what how you will construct the frequency table now next point cumulative frequency distribution so in statistics a cumulative frequency is defined as the total number of frequencies that are distributed over different class intervals it means that the data and the total are represented in the form of a table in which the frequencies are distributed according to the class interval so we will see one by one there are two types of cumulative frequency first one is less than cumulative frequency and second one is more than cumulative frequency now what is actually less than cumulative frequency so less than cumulative frequency distribution is obtained by adding successively the frequency this is very important huh? of all the previous classes along with the class against which it is written then greater than cumulative frequency distribution is obtained by determining the cumulative total frequencies this is very important starting from the highest class to the lowest class see we will see one example now see here the marks are given again for the 20 students see marks are given 
then present this information in a frequency table, but by calculating what less than cumulative and more than. See all of you know this, how you will present the value in again ascending order, see marks are given in ascending order up to 10. Tally marks all of you know here 4, see from this data item 4 here repeated 2 times. So, tally marks are 2, frequency is 2. In the same way for the 5 all of you know this 2, 2. Okay. Now, see how you will calculate less than cumulative frequency. So, start from the first frequency that is 2. Huh? Now, adding successively next frequency see here for the next data item the frequency is what previous plus next. So, 2 plus 2 which is equal to 4 this is the frequency less than cumulative frequency for 5 data item. In the same way next 4 plus 4 which is equal to 8 this is the less than cumulative frequency for this data item 6. In the same way 8 plus 5 which is equal to 13 now 13 plus 4 which is equal to 17 17 plus 2 which is equal to 19 and 19 plus 1 is equal to 20. So, this is what total frequency. Now, for the more than cumulative frequency first you have to write down what total frequency that is 20 highest to lowest. So, now we have to subtract see 20 for this now next one is what 20 minus 2 which is equal to 18 this is for what next data item. Now, in the same way 18 minus 2 which is equal to what 16 now 16 minus 4 see it is equal to 12. Now, 12 minus 5 which is equal to 7, 7 minus 4 which is equal to 3 and 3 minus 2 which is equal to 1. So, this is nothing but the more than cumulative frequency. So, in this way we can calculate less than as well as more than cumulative frequency for the given data item. Now, take another example here again marks of 60 students are given then here also again class is already given starting class 0 to 9 and here it is given that equal width we have to consider 10 classes. So, see next. Now, see these are the different classes 10 classes are there previously we have seen this example 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 19 and so on up to what 90 to 99. All of you know this tally mark representation and frequency. Uh, we have to consider only what less than cumulative frequency and more than cumulative frequency. So, here again start from the first frequency that is 4. Now, add successively 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 3 10, 10 plus 11 21, 21 plus 7 28, 28 plus 9 which is equal to 37, 37 plus 11 48, 48 plus 5 53, 53 plus 4 57 and 57 plus 3 60. So, this is what less than cumulative frequency for all these classes and more than cumulative frequency in the same way total number of frequency it is equal to 60 na? 60 data terms are there. Now, we have to subtract this for the more than. So, highest to lowest. So, 60 minus 4 56, 56 minus 3 53, 53 minus 3 which is equal to 50, 50 minus 11 which is equal to 39, 39 minus 7 is equal to 32. Then in the same way 32 minus 9 23, 23 minus 11 12, 12 minus 5 7 and 7 minus 4 last is 3. So, this is more than cumulative frequency. So, in this way we can calculate less than cumulative frequency as well as more than cumulative frequency.